Samuel Middleton Fox was a British writer. He was born in 1856 in Tottenham, the son of Samuel Lindo Fox from Tottenham and Rachel Elizabeth Fox of the Wellington branch of the Fox family. He attended Jesus College Cambridge, graduating in 1883 as Bachelor of Laws. In 1887, he married Adelaide Eliza Bell. Though initially a Quaker, he held military rank in the 1st Cumberland Volunteer Battalion, becoming a lieutenant by 1908. His first book was the 1887 satire, Our Own Pompeii, A Romance of Tomorrow, concerning a pleasure city on the Riviera. His last book was a play about Gethe Simini co-written with his son Cyril Spencer Fox in 1934. He died in 1941. We will review his 1905 A Child of the Shore Cornish Romance. The book is set around Helston, and begins with a haunting description of the country as a place of forgotten old mysteries, where men once heard the songs of mermaids, and where the mannequin fruit tree first sprung from the body of a drowned French sailor. We see the Peters family, who are mistrusted by their neighbours because they have too much luck at their farm, but Hannah Peters is troubled by not having a child. So one day she goes to Mullion to a certain Mary Trabath, who is known to help in such matters. The two go to a cave of ill repute, then Hannah lies down naked, as crabs and fowl and nameless things crawl out of the sea and grope in the darkness to find her. Drinking a hellish broth made by the witch, an army of bestial monsters screams and howls about her all night. A daughter is born of that night named Grace. Many years later we see Tom Tregaskis, who once courted Hannah, and on her rejection became her bitter enemy, out and about taking part in the smuggling trade. The people of the coast do not only not mind the smuggling, but they are against doing anything to save people who are drowning as them drowning is God's will. And they also see nothing wrong with putting out lights in the hills to make ships crash and cause all those people to drown, just to steal the cargo washed up on shore. But they will moralize and say Grace is not right in the head because she goes to bathe in the sea every day and knows how to row a boat. At the same time, Harry, the nephew of the local squire, is coming home wounded from the war, and Tregaskis plans to bring him and Grace together to cause the girl to fall into ill repute and her family into ruin. Harry and Grace do fall together, and when her father is away, the inevitable happens. But Grace or Harry do not know it yet as he leaves to go fight in Spain. While in the parish of Zenor amid the half-pagan people of the mines, Grace's father is told of her expecting child by Uncle Billy, one of the last droll tellers or wandering storytellers of old Cornwall. He rushes home, but Tregaskis had painted him as a liar trying to extort money from the squire. So the squire turns the Peters out of the farm. Grace is falling ill as the months go by, and then as she worries she will be dragged down into the sea after her death by her sister Mermaids, she dies. Soon after, Tom Tregaskis sets light in the hills and wrecks a ship, but one person happens to avoid drowning, Captain Harry himself. While the people are annoyed he dared survive and cheated them of a fancy funeral, but they are also worried he may tell why the ship was wrecked. He does but tries to shield Tom for saving his life. But when he drags himself to the drunken scoundrel's hut to warn him, he finds out he had turned out the Peters from their farm and lied about Grace and Harry to the squire. Leaving him to get hanged, he goes to the shore and there sees Grace who is now a mermaid and who holds him to a cold dead body until morning, when the rising tide drowns him. Grace now not understanding doing so will kill him. The book has masterful atmosphere, and Fox evokes a spirit of supernatural Cornwall most brilliantly.